little bit different this morning, huh? <laughs> this past Thursday, in lectionary lunch, uh, Lewis Hart asked a question that just stuck with me. He said, is this story the imprimatur for the story before it? I said, what? Kind of caught me off guard. Is this story the imprimatur for the story before it? In other words, the story where Gabriel comes and announces to Mary that she's going to be giving birth to Jesus. And Mary says, let it be to me as she was spoken. And you know what the imprimatur is? Those of you who have grew up in the Roman Catholic tradition probably know that that's the stamp that goes in books of spiritual works or theological texts to make sure that it's orthodoxically, orthodoxically organic and there's no nasty byproducts or heretical additives put to the book. It's clean, it's pure. So that's what Lewis asked. And I thought, wow, that's a good question. And I think, well, the more I thought about it, I thought it's more than an imprimatur of that story. It's an imprimatur for each and every one of us. The power of the power and the potential that this story carries. Because this story is speaking about the power of God released and revealed in human beings. Now, how does that happen in you? How does that happen in me? I realize I have to work for that to happen in me. The first thing I've got to overcome is the dungeon of expectation. And I'm chained in that dungeon by reward, the fear of reward. And by punishment, the fear of punishment. I'm held fast there. So there's no potential, no possibility. I'm running family scripts. I'm being obsessive. I'm kowtowing to a false god. How do we break free of that? We break free of that through God's grace. I'm going to share with you a story that I've shared with you before that really speaks to the moment this happens. And it can be an unsuspecting moment. It's by my friend, Kabir Gominsky. I remember days of difficult labor in a spiritual school where we were encouraged to keep a balanced attention through all kinds of situations. I was given the task of grooming a horse from mane to tail, from the hooves right up. I worked for hours. Then the teacher came and after a brief inspection said, a oh, very poor job, superficial and sloppy. He and I watched as my heart sank. But then something rebounded. I knew I had done my best. I knew that I could not be a slave of reward or blame. In that moment, I saw the twinkle in his eye. He turned and left. In the twinkle of a moment, grace can come upon us and release us from that dungeon of fear, that dungeon of expectation where reward and blame really has no hold over us anymore. Only the possibilities that God has laid out in front of us on an expanding horizon free from any dungeon. The beauty of this story is that two women meet. One who was called barren. No possibility of life coming from you. That'd be Elizabeth. And she's carrying John. And the other, Mary. A very fertile young woman carrying with her all possibilities only made possible and she said yes to the moment of grace. And in these two women are represented our imprimatur, our stamp that God has given each and every one of us here the potential to give birth to 
Christ in this world. The potential to unleash God's love, God's promise in this world. It's the imprimatur that's given to you. It is God's own seal upon your heart and upon mine.